Chicken stock makes its return. This time I'm gonna make some risotto using chicken stock. So this is arboreal rice, about 150 grams-ish. One shallot, chicken stock, quarter cup of dry white wine. This is Pinot Grigio. Parmigiano Reggiano, butter, and finally I'm gonna make a sauteed cremini mushroom with some basil to put on top. I'm not gonna incorporate the mushroom into the risotto itself um, because I like some texture on top of the risotto. First up, I'm gonna cut up some stuff. Start with some basil. And I'm gonna do a uh, chiffonade, which is Basically a fine slice. What I'm doing here is I'm just stacking these all up from the biggest to the smallest. So the biggest leaf is on the bottom. And then we'll roll it. And then just cut from here. I'm gonna put this in the saute mushroom. Um, I'm gonna add this at the very end. Now mushrooms usually go well with thyme, but I don't have thyme. Um, so I guess some basil will have to do. It works, you know, I like basil. Just not in my risotto, you know. In this application, it's gonna be on my risotto. Then next up, cut up one shallot. Turn it around. Got my shallots diced. Finally, the uh, cremini mushrooms. This is half a pound here. I'm gonna use um, about half of this, or a quarter pound. Now there's this huge debate of whether or not you should wash mushrooms. I don't. And I don't care if there's soil. Okay, I just don't care. So, I'll cut off the stock because it's a little bit woody, but I'm not gonna waste it. Instead, I'm gonna put it in my chicken stock. Okay, it's free flavor, you know? Also like all the bits that fall off. Go straight in. You know, this way you get a mushroom infused chicken stock for free. I mean not for free, but see what I'm saying? You'd be wasting this if you don't do it. I'm just gonna cut these in half because these are not huge mushrooms and they shrink quite a lot. You cook them. So I like some texture. You know? And that's it. Got the setup here. Ideally, you probably want to make risotto with like a saucepan or a high wall saute pan. But because I'm going to use my saucepan for the stock, you know, I'm only left with this. I'm not going to make it in a wok, although you could. So, I'm going to turn the heat on, preheat that pan, and I want to turn this on here. So I want to bring the stock up to a simmer and then just turn the heat down low to keep it warm. Because what happens is if you don't do this, you're going to ladle cold stock in your hot rice and that's not going to go for, go go well um, as far as I know. Get my ladle ready. While we wait, might as well season the stock a little bit. Now don't, don't wanna go too crazy here because um, most if not all the stock is gonna end up um, in my risotto. As I accidentally sprinkle some salt on here, that's okay. Um, well, I have to season the um, shallots anyway when I brown it. Okay, so the pan's getting pretty hot. I left it on high. I'm going to turn it down a little bit to medium high. 
I'm gonna go in with a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I'm gonna get my shallots browning. Or actually, I'm not looking for much color. I just want to soften the shallots. Let's just give that a quick saute. It's turning a little bit golden, so it's turning heat down a little bit. Don't want it to aggressively brown again. And hit it with some salt. A couple pinches. Now it's on the verge of taking up major color. So now it's time to toast the rice. All this stuff going in. I need a touch more oil. Whew, that's close. A teaspoon more or so. Pan's getting a little bit cold because of the cold rice going in. Turn it up a little bit. You know, heat adjustment. Now the stock is warmed up, which is literally all I want. So I'm gonna turn it all the way down low, just to keep it warm here. This is about four cups or a quart, or a little bit less than a liter of stock. I'm probably not gonna use all of it, but we'll see. And I think I'm ready to throw some wine to the party. I'm turning heat all the way up. Quarter cup of wine. Oh, that's the noise. Normally, you know, this step is called deglazing, but that's basically non-existent with a non-stick pan because there's no sticky bits on the bottom, but that's okay. Just want to kind of incorporate everything together. And then I'm going to add the stock a ladle at a time. See how it already starts to get, you know, creamy? And almost all of this has evaporated. I'm going to go ahead and ladle in my first layer of stock. Okay, we're gonna start our timer. The package said 15 to 18 minutes, you know? But um, I only trust my um, my palate, so I'm gonna taste it after like 14 or 15 minutes to see how it is. So from this stage, you know, it's truly a labor of love. I'm just gonna keep stirring. Um, so the, the rice kernels absorb the liquid, and then once it's almost absorbed, you just add a little bit more liquid. Um, you know. Some recipes claim that you could just chuck everything in the um, in an instant pot, you know, and it does its job. Which I believe, you know, is pretty legit, but I don't have an instant pot, and this is kind of therapeutic. I might as well just do this, you know. Most of the liquid absorbed. Go in with more. There's a lot of things you can change here in the recipe. Um, you could use white onions instead of shallots. Also, you can use uh, vegetable stock, you know, to make it vegetarian. And um, you could saute the mushrooms at the beginning with the rice and the shallot, you know? If you want a mushroom risotto. Again, that's if you want mushroom in your risotto, I want mushroom on my risotto. That's a difference, it's a big difference. Most of the liquid has, again, been absorbed. Go in more. Now one ladle of this is about a third of a cup, roughly. Uh, for reference, and this is about 150 grams of rice that I began with. But you know, if you're not sure, I would advise that you go slowly to begin with. You know, piano piano in Italian, I'm pretty sure. Because the idea is you can always add more, but you can't take out. See the rice grains swell up in size. 
going to release some of the starch into the liquid to make everything nice and creamy. It's been about five minutes. Just want to make sure that the heat is distributed somewhat evenly, especially with you know a 10 inch frying pan. You don't want the center to burn. You don't want the edge to be cold. Most of the liquid is gone again. Now you don't have to wait until like all the liquid is gone, at which point it's gonna turn to hard fried rice. You know, you wanna keep everything nice and moist. Look at, look at, look at how creamy the liquid is. It's all the starch being released. All right, another round of liquid. I can feel the volume increase. Like there's more re resistance every time I stir now compared with five minutes ago. It's an increase in volume and viscosity. Now my impulse tells me to taste this because it looks so good, but I'm not gonna because it's still pretty hard in the center. Some more stock please. Right. I'm gonna make some rearrangements. Put this guy here because I still need to saute my mushrooms. You know? And because I only have three pans, I have to use a wok. Kind of intimidating, I know. Don't have a, don't have any other choice and that's not gonna fit. So that's fantastic. Sometimes you're just gonna live with it. Okay, now we're at 12 minutes. Give that a taste. Yeah, that it don't need a few more minutes. It's not rock hard, but it's not soft either. Oopsie. It's getting a little bit trickier as I try to avoid scooping the mushroom stalks in there. Although that's probably tasty too. It's time to multitask. Mushrooms going in. I can already feel the nerve. This is why I can never work at a restaurant. I like to do my cooking one step at a time. Don't like multitasking. I'm almost like pan searing the mushrooms, if that makes sense. We'll turn the heat down a little bit on the mushroom side. Make sure nothing's burning. Well, it smells like it's getting pretty close, which is not ideal. So what I'm gonna do here is actually add some stock in there. More stock going in. Mushroom looking pretty good. Hit that with some salt. I'm gonna turn the heat off on the wok. Focus on our risotto for a second. Um, it's almost there. We're at 16 minutes. Give that a taste. Need a couple more minutes. I do like my risotto al dente, but that's still a little bit too raw. Touch more stock going in there. Don't have a lot left. Feed that a little bit. Okay. We're on the home stretch here. All of this goes in. At this point, the risotto looks a little bit too liquidy. That's exactly what I want because I'll be adding butter and Parmesan cheese now. And the heat is off now. So, one tablespoon at a time. I'm gonna swirl in the butter, cold butter. You can't worry about your calorie intake right about now. You're having risotto either way, you know? What does one more knob of butter do to it? Nothing. The Parmigiano Reggiano. Don't get the powdered stuff, it's not the same thing. Go nuts on parm as well.
Don't hold back now. See what I'm saying? Stir that in. This is what's gonna emulsify the risotto. A really nice, saucy consistency. The butter has disappeared. It's nice. So has the Parmesan cheese. Now I declare this, this risotto to be done. I set that aside while I finish up my mushrooms. Turn the heat back on here. Uh, this is not a big space, is it? Let me add some butter to my mushrooms as well. Another tablespoon. That's three tablespoons of butter in literally a minute. Lastly, the basil goes in. Just want to wilt the basil a little bit. That basil touched the butter a little bit. Heat off. Oh, that smells amazing. I do say so myself. All right. Finish off. Mushroom topping. Touch of pepper. And we're done. Hmm. 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 Oh yeah. Saute mushrooms. So good. It retains that juicy texture, juicy snappy texture, tender, crisp, if you will. And the basil, the butter, the olive oil are all so out there. The sweetness from the Parmesan cheese comes through as well. This plate is probably somewhere around a thousand calories or more, but I mean, it's delicious. And this is easily two portions. It fills up the whole plate, you know? But the MVP definitely goes to the mushrooms. Mushroom risotto is overrated. Mushroom on risotto is underrated. Also, good quality chicken stock plays a huge part in this dish because that's literally all the base flavor of the rice. So if you have some good quality homemade stock, the rice is gonna taste like chicken. You know, if you're in a pinch, obviously you could use store-bought stock, but it's not the same thing. So yeah, yet another application of chicken stock. Liquid gold, make risotto. It's great. And it really isn't that hard. You just gotta take care of it, you know? You can't, you can't leave the stove for more than a minute at a time. But the, uh, the payoff is huge. So yeah, like, subscribe, comment, share. I'm out.